When I asked the romantics where they found love, they told me about schools and supermarkets, classrooms and carousels. But this was foreign to me because I found love on a chalkboard in July. I found love in a resistor, a capacitor, a schematic drawn on a piece of paper in pink pen. I found love in a satellite, in writing down data. I found love with 23 girls who built dreams and stories with me, who will always cherish me and I will always cherish them. Because I found love with them, in a resistor, a capacitor, in a circuit, and on a chalkboard in July. I wrote this poem when I was 15 years old and I had decided that I wanted to be an engineer. It was August 21st, 2017, at one o'clock on a Monday afternoon, and it was my very first day of the 11th grade. My first day of a pre-college program where I would spend the next two years living on campus taking college courses. Going in, we had to declare a major, and the one that I had declared was space systems engineering, which was ambitious, to say the least. I walked in to my very first class, one o'clock on a Monday, and I sat down at my desk, front row on the left. I got out my notebook and my pencils and my erasers, and I was more excited than I think I had ever been for school. I looked like a kindergartner. And the professor walked in, and he set his books down, and he scanned the room, and he told us that this was an electronic processes class and that there were too many women in there. The first time that I went into his office hours to ask him a question about the homework, he told me he knew that this technical stuff could be difficult for us women to process, and that if I wanted to switch into an easier field, like nursing or teaching, he'd suggest I do that sooner rather than later so as not to waste anybody's time. I was shocked and I was heartbroken. But I learned really quickly that this was not an uncommon experience. The Society of Women in Engineering ran the numbers for us from 2018. In a first year engineering class, 30% of students are women. It's about 10 in a class of 30. But over the course of their university education, 32% of women switch out of STEM programs, which leaves us with seven in 30. And while 20% of engineering degrees are awarded to women, only 13% of people working in industry identify as female, which leaves us with four in 30, less than half of the original number that we started with. Of those women who left, 60% of them cite environmental hostility as the reason, and of those who stayed, 50% or more report repeatedly having to prove themselves to their male colleagues. Some work environments can be really great, and I have experienced those firsthand, but some are not. More than several times, I have been belittled, dismissed, talked down to, talked over, and sometimes not talked to at all. But I have stuck with this and I've stuck with it for a reason, and that traces back to the reason that I chose engineering in the first place. See, it was the summer of 2017, the summer before I went to the pre-college program, before I had chosen space systems as my major. At that point, I really didn't know what engineering was, and I had planned on going through as a neuropsychology major and studying music education once I got to what I liked to call big girl college. But I also had nothing to do for the summer. So my parents suggested that I apply to this week-long space systems engineering camp for young women. I applied, and I ended up receiving a scholarship for the camp's tuition, and so I went. The very first thing that they did after our parents dropped us off was they took all 24 of us into a lab, and everything in sight was pink. I mean, pink lab manuals, pink pens for writing in pink lab manuals, pink toolboxes, pink safety goggles, pink blankets draped over the backs of our chairs, I mean everything. And I wanted to be so offended by this. Just because it was a camp for girls didn't mean everything had to be pink. The blossoming feminist in me wanted to brush off traditional gender roles. But 
The more I thought about it, the more I came to love the pink toolbox and pink safety goggles, which I still use, by the way. I didn't love them because they were pink, though. What I loved about them was that by creating this pink lab space, we had declared this lab, an engineering lab, to be a space for girls. A lot of times I'll catch myself saying, I'm a woman, but I'm an engineer. By creating this pink lab space, they had said, hey, we're women and we're engineers. Looking back, I realized that if anything is in the business of getting me to conform to traditional gender roles, it is not pink lab equipment. It is a society who tells me that pink, because of its femininity, is inferior, and those who would have me believe that my pink tool set makes me any less of an engineer. They took us into that lab for the very first time, that lab that I have now grown to love so much. And the director of the camp, who was also the instructor, sat us down and she said to us something that I will never forget and that I carry with me to this day. Your voice is your power. You control your life, and if anything you encounter isn't fair, you speak up for yourself. You speak up for yourself because you are worth it. Feel your emotions, even if they're big, and even if other people tell you that they are unreasonable. Feel them and speak up for what is not fair. You have made it this far in your life, and that in and of itself is a success. You are successful because you are here. At that point, I knew that I had not just walked into some random summer camp. I knew that this would affect me for the rest of my life. By the end of the day, I had learned how to breadboard, and I had built my first circuit. By the middle of the week, I had learned how to solder, and I had built and launched a satellite. By the end of the week, I had collected data on that satellite, analyzed it, and presented that data with two other girls. But by the end of the week, I had learned something much more valuable than any technical piece of information that they could have taught me. I learned that I am worth it. I am worth the late nights and the hard work. I learned to speak up for myself inside my field and out of it. I had learned that my voice is my power. I found a passion, and I found permission to have that passion, which has allowed me to continue studying engineering. I have carried that passion with me every day since then. And I carried that passion with me all the way up to my very first day of the 11th grade, 117 Space Science Center at my desk, front row on the left, when I heard those heartbreaking words for the very first time, this isn't a woman's field. And I made a decision right then and there. I was going to be an engineer, and not just any engineer. I was going to be relentlessly and unapologetically myself as an engineer. My pink toolbox has gotten me more than a couple of stairs, but what, I've, I, what I have learned is that I can handle stairs as long as I speak up for myself, and I will speak up for myself because I am worth it and my voice is my power. I was 15 years old when I decided that I wanted to be an engineer. I was 18 years old when I was given this amazing opportunity to share my story with all of you, and I'm 18 years old asking each and every one of you right now, how old will you be when you commit to unapologetically following your passion as your truest self on the path that you pave? Your passion doesn't have to look like mine. Whether your passion is engineering, art, playing a sport, or anything else, follow it and you don't have to be perfect at it. I'm certainly not. You can ask my physics professor. You don't have to be perfect, but you do have to be passionate. My passion looks like pink toolboxes, pink safety goggles, and writing codes until well past midnight, and I own that. Own your passion and speak up for it. Your voice is your power, so use it. <laughs>